Welcome to Web Systems. Today we're going to cover a bit of history actually about Unix. So a brief history on we know that the web is a gigantic, gigantic network of computers, networks of networks, routers, switches and devices, as well as applications of course. And that a lot of these operating systems in fact tend to run an operating system called Unix or Linux in our case. There are many, many common operating systems out there at the moment. For example, we have our classic uh, Mac and iPhone background, based on BSD. We have Linux, like Red Hat. Solaris, like that rerun system. We have um, Windows 7 and Windows 10, and Windows 2008, and so on. We even have operating systems that run on things like Nokia's, and I've mentioned quite a few. So let's look at Linux and Unix. Unix has been around for ages. Let's have a quick look at Unix. Unix has been used continually since 1969, probably before your parents were born. It's used on most of the computers running the internet. For example, on web servers, domain name servers, probably not as much as mail servers, a lot of online mail servers now. For example, Google, Microsoft, Outlook Web Access. Web hosting is very popular as well. And you'll find that most people say, yeah, this is great. We run servers. This is the server-side stuff. It's not good for ordinary users. Well, that's actually very, very wrong. Because Mac has been based on Unix for a long time. The user interface is fancy, but the underlying system is Unix, the system called Darwin. It's based, it's based on a system called Darwin. And it's also the basis of Android phones and netbooks, like Chromebooks, your router. So you've used it a lot, but you don't necessarily know that you've used it. So it's one of these interesting things about operating systems. They're behind the covers. There's many versions of Unix. For example, the original version came from AT&T, and I'll show you a chart in a moment, and branched off into many different ways. So notice one thing. I've actually mixed Unix and Unix-like. So when I say Linux, I mean Unix. When I say Unix, I mean Linux. In the beginning, in 1969, at the beginning, Linux was developed as a research project in a group called Bell Labs. These guys, Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, and so on, also helped develop a language, a guy called Cunningham, developed a language called C, which they used to compile and develop Unix itself. Because it's a research project, they let a group at Berkeley, which is the University of California, Berkeley, take some of their source code and develop a separate research version of Unix. A few years later, Microsoft, of all people, got involved and they actually developed a version of Unix for basically 86 operating, x86 operating systems. A bit later, since Bell saw that there was a lot of interest in Unix, they commercialized it. And they sold their commercial arm to a group called Unix, or SCO, S -C -O, which apparently is partly owned by Novell now. These other versions you saw became Solaris. So a company called Sun took a copy of AT&T's Unix and made it their own. This is on rerun at the moment, so that's the current system we use to access remotely. A few other systems we use as well, like HP UX and AIX, IBM and HP's versions of Unix. And um, what happened next is that there's a guy called Richard Stallman who believed in open source. So he developed a version of Unix completely separate from that research Unix done at Bell Labs. That's why we have dotted lines here. He made it separately. A bit later, a guy called Andy Tenenbaum developed a version of Unix called Minix, which literally fitted on one floppy disk, if you know what a floppy disk is, 720k basically. He fitted an entire operating system on one of these little disks, and he used it for teaching operating systems. What happened then? Linus, Tovalis, got a copy of both, and developed his own operating system called Linux as a, I guess, a play project, which became the Linux we all love and know today. Be aware that there's many other versions of Linux around, 
or Unix I should say, FreeBSD and OpenBSD based on the original development. It's very popular security researchers and Steve Jobs when he was kicked out of Apple's in the 90s developed a company called Next Step which developed the user interfaces we see with OS X and that became Apple OS X when he rejoined Apple. So this is Steve Jobs' revenge. He formed the new operating system OS X, which really stood for Operating System 10, the old version of OS 9, and he open sourced it as well. Darwin is the basic kernel of the Mac, and it's open source. You can download it, compile it yourself. It's just the user interface is different, and that's the version of OS X. What we really should mention, OS X divided into the iPhone version and the Mac version. So keep that in mind. Now Unix has been around for quite a while, since 1969, so you've seen the history, it came from many different sources. Now the key thing is, because that happens, there are a lot of Unix um, variations. The scripting languages are all various. You'll find things called Bash, Shell, Ash, K-Shell, C-Shell, or lots of different languages they use out there, and the commands aren't exactly the same. Take a look at Solaris on rerun. The ls command, for example, has different options on Unix versus Linux versus Solaris. So it's quite an interesting problem. So things get really confusing. Which command option do I use, etc. So we tried to standardize it. IEEE tried to stand it. They called it POSIX. And all they did is say what the commands, what the system calls were, etc. Um, it kind of worked and kind of didn't. Castle is, it was very complex, and nobody could really agree on it. That ended up in the 1990s Unix wars. As you saw in the 1990s, that's where the number of Unix distributions exploded. Linux started, FreeBSD started, NextStep started. The commercialization for Solaris started as well. So different companies did different things and they even sued each other just to try to get out of that. Strangely enough Microsoft even wrote a POSIX interface for Windows NT. Weird things happen everywhere. Anyway in 2002 they finally got together and agreed on a non-licensed thing called a single Unix specification known as SUS. So if, it, if your operating system met that specification it could be your Unix. If not Unix-like. So Linux technically is actually a Unix-like operating system. I've mixed it, but well, as far as we're concerned, it's the same. There's only one operating system that's been around for longer than Unix, and that was actually by IBM, one of the first operating systems I ever dealt with in the commercial world. It's called VM. Really weird thing about VM, it's very much, much like um, your virtualized operating systems you have through VMware. For example, the idea is you run virtual machines and you run an operating system on top of it. Strangely enough, IBM even ran Unix under Linux, in fact, under VM. So, why has Unix been around for so long? It's 1969 is a long time. It's a lifetime away. Two lifetimes away, in fact. Well, the main reason it survived no one owned the ideas. Nobody painted Unix. They didn't even copyright it. All the fights were over a few headers, a bit of source code that had the word copyright AT&T. Paint. It's a, really a set of ideas. That's why it could be rewritten. The concepts are there. And anyone can redevelop their own version of Unix if they wish. So the thing is, all the law course cases were just over a few lines of code in a bit of software that had the word copyright um, Solaris or copyright AT&T or something like that. Very blurred at the moment. It's also really simple. It's a very simple concepts and you wouldn't really believe how simple the concepts could be. Everything, files, process permissions and users as a file. So even hardware devices like the mouse is a special file in a directory called dev. It's a special file called mouse. So as far as Unix is concerned, it's reading and writing files of some kind. So you can incorporate new technologies, like we didn't have Flash, for example, in the past, or video cameras and things like that. They are simply files. The other big benefit is Unix is very portable because C. 
it's not tied to any particular CPU so we don't need to worry about it we can actually recompile for um, x86 we can recompile for other things like for example um, ARM which is used by the uh, the processor in iPhones for example so it's the same technologies anything new that comes we can redevelop it no problems just recompile it um, it's mostly free not always but most there's been free versions since 1994 Linux and FreeBSD the good thing is we were developed to run on cheap PCs Intel based they start off as the uh, the Pentium computers all the way up to the latest core systems all works fine so you can dump Windows and store your own version of Linux if you wish it's very efficient now the really good thing about efficiency is it's small and simple fast and stable for example Linux Jim that system has been running for probably about two or three years without booting at all a lot of core system routers for example haven't been booted at all since they, was, they first started up literally for decades in some cases so it's really really stable it's actually designed for security from the ground up you have owners you have security permissions so it's quite hard to make viruses for Unix becoming pop possible now people find flaws in the system but from the ground up it's always been more stable than Windows it's just a set of tools approach we make things small and build up so very simple commands we add commands together and we get more complex commands you can pipe output from one command to another to make a complex tools you can use IO redirection the less than pipe symbol the greater than you can make your own commands by scripting you'll do that in Linux Jim chapter 6 and 7 so at UTS we use two versions of Linux oh, Unix my apologies Solaris well, written by a company called Sun now owned by a company called Oracle and we run a commercial one a version of Linux called Red Hat Enterprise Linux you can run that it's open, available as open source called CentOS just be aware there's different things you can do but we use a commercial one because we like to have it all supported on our hardware um, Linux Jim by the way is based on Debian it's actually running Debian 4 an ancient version of Debian but still it's based on an old distro so interesting introduction um, if you can have some time to try this exercise log on to rerun use SSH notice this user ID is your alphabetic for e.g. minus CHW don't log on with your numeric user ID don't do that and try a few things like again I mentioned the word LS try look at the root directory very different structure from Linux but the thing is you'll understand the concepts at the high level that makes it so easy to do use I hope you enjoy this short history of Unix we'll go on to other topics shortly